In 2015, a bizarre blog called Sonic For Real Justice appeared on Tumblr.com. It advocated against Tumblr social justice warriors and labelled itself as an anti-SJW blog, which also happened to be run by Sonic characters. Not only were their posts ridiculous and extreme, but the blog became infamous for the moderator's bizarre antics and infighting with explosive arguments breaking out on a daily basis and mods banning each other left and right. The blog went viral for its ridiculous premise as well as its even more ridiculous mod team and it's still frequently talked about even today. Sonic For Real Justice is a classic piece of Tumblr and even internet history that remains to this day as one of the craziest online sagas of all time. So let's go over the history of Sonic For Real Justice from its humble beginnings to all of the drama that ensued to its downfall to the real truth behind the blog. If you're looking for an epic tale of love, loss, betrayal, and lots of drama, buckle in because today we're talking about Sonic for Real Justice. Before we get into things, I just want to give a huge thank you to Boxu for sponsoring this video. Boxu is a premium Japanese snack subscription box that delivers tasty and authentic Japanese snacks and teas straight to your door. Every month, Boxu puts together a new themed box with various new snacks and goodies so you can take a delicious journey through Japan. The box that I got this month was the Pink Valentine box and I was honestly so stoked with the selection of stuff I got this time. I'm literally obsessed with these baked chocolates. They're like little cake bites. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. I got this delicious Choco Arari which is like a milk chocolate mochi rice almond snack and oh my gosh they were so good. I also got this really cool Azuki chocolate which I just thought was like regular chocolate but it's actually flavored with Azuki red beans from Hokkaido. I'm so excited that this month's theme is Valentine's because firstly it means there's lots of chocolate which I'm very excited about and secondly everything is super cute like the senbei is heart shaped, the crackers are like shaped like little hearts and I love it so much. Boxu partners with artisanal and family snack makers in Japan, which means you're not only getting a genuinely authentic experience, but you're supporting these independent businesses. Some snacks are even Boxu exclusives, which means that you won't find them anywhere else. Every box comes with a super cool booklet that includes information about the snacks and teas, and even has a map showing you where in Japan your snacks are from. I genuinely can't recommend Boxu enough. The snacks are delicious. You get a huge range of different stuff so you can share with people or just be sure that there's gonna be something that you like in there. And it's a surprise every month, so it's exciting when you open it. Whether you want to share with friends and family or get yourself some treats, there's nothing like unboxing Boxu, so use the code on screen and head to the link in the description to get 10% off and save up to $47 on your own authentic Japanese subscription box from Boxu. Don't miss out on this amazing snack journey through Japan. Thank you so much to Boxu for sponsoring this video, and now let's get on with the story of Sonic for Real Justice. So before we get into the glorious train wreck that was Sonic For Real Justice, we first have to understand what ask blogs are. Tumblr has a feature that allows users to put an ask box on their page where followers can ask questions anonymously or using their regular profiles, and one of the main ways that this feature has been used is for ask blogs. Ask blogs are blogs specifically created to answer questions, generally in character as a fictional character or OC. From Ask Twilight Sparkle to Ask Rapunzel to Ask the Onceler and more. The blog will reply in character, usually accompanied by art or images of the character, but sometimes just with plain text too. It's common for multiple people to run ask blogs, in which case they'll usually post under different moderator aliases, and oh boy, we're gonna be seeing a lot of that in this story. Before diving in, we also have to understand the time period. Yes, this is a period piece. Sonic for Real Justice was launched in May of 2015, around the height of the anti-SJW movement. For the uninformed, SJW stands for Social Justice Warrior and is used for people who promote, quote, socially progressive left wing and liberal views including feminism, civil rights, gay and transgender rights, identity politics, political correctness and multiculturalism. In response to the rise of social justice warriors, groups of so-called anti-SJWs emerged alongside them and the movement really hit its peak around the early to mid 2010s. YouTube recommendations were filled to the brim with humongous meme compilations, that lady with the red hair, feminists getting hashtag owned and leafy as hair videos. It was truly a dark time. But the anti-SJW movement movement wasn't just relegated to triggered attack helicopter meme comps on the tube, it made its way onto other sites including Tumblr which is where the saga of Sonic for Real Justice begins. Now I have to put two disclaimers here really quick, first of all Sonic for Real Justice is very goofy and silly and is viewed by everyone as a meme basically but there is going to be discussion of their anti-SJW posts so if that's something that you're not into, um, 
that's just a content warning. Also, it shouldn't really need to be said, but I don't condone anything on the blog. I'm not advocating for it. I'm just here to cover this train wreck. Second disclaimer, I'm going to be reading out a lot of posts in this video and there are a lot of characters to keep up with. Most of the time it's pretty clear who's speaking just from context clues, but just in case I'm going to be putting the image of the character who's speaking on the screen alongside the post, just for clarity's sake. Also, just as a side note, a number of the mods later changed their pronouns from their intros and old posts, so when talking about them in present day, I'm going to try to use their current pronouns just to clear up any confusion. With all that out of the way and without further ado, let's get into the saga of Sonic for Real Justice. On the 30th of March 2015, a blog called Sonic for Real Justice was set up on Tumblr. It was an anti-social justice blog with five moderators who used it to answer questions and share their opinions on social justice topics. There was Mod Sonic, Mod Amy, Mod Tails, Mod Takal, and Mod Shadow, and their introductions were glorious. Take for example Mod Amy's. Amy Rose is here. My turn for introductions now, I guess. Hey, you can call me Amy. I enjoy a ton of stuff such as cats, video games, and watching SJWs make fools of themselves. I'm a cis bisexual female, so she and her pronouns strictly, though honestly, I could care less. I won't talk about my hate for SJW culture here. I'll let it shine through my posts. Hope you enjoy the blog, love heart. But the most hilarious introduction and the single post that skyrocketed Sonic for Real Justice into a viral Tumblr meme was the introduction of Mod Shadow. Hmm. I'm Mod Shadow, male and an atheist, anti-SJW, anti-feminist, anti-gun control, pro-logic. I chose Shadow the Hedgehog as an internet persona as I relate to him when it comes to his hatred of humans, or in my case, social justice warriors. These SJWs think that fighting fire with fire will accomplish anything? Well, in the real world it won't. I hope that one day these pathetic SJWs will come to their senses. The concept of this super extreme anti-social justice blog run by Sonic characters was so ridiculous and silly that it became a a site-wide meme on Tumblr instantly. Just as the blog was beginning to settle into answering asks and writing thought-provoking posts like the SJWs once stole my lunch money, the mods had their first big fight. Sonic for Real Justice had a strict set of rules that all of the moderators had to abide by, from no doxing to no special snowflakes allowed. But one important rule that a certain moderator had overlooked was Rule 2, ask and submit must stay open at all times. May 31st, 2015, 6.58pm. The calm before the storm. This blog hasn't even been up for a day and already one of our members has violated the rules. 7.03 p.m. The reckoning. I'd like to ask which mod closed the ask box. <laughs> I I'm sorry. That was me. I I'm so sorry to Carl. I, I got overwhelmed. Sylvie, you haven't even fucking posted. I get you're shy and all, but you haven't even posted. Message me on Skype now. So yeah, apparently there was actually six moderators with the reveal of Mod Silver who had never been introduced or even posted on the blog. But since he broke the cardinal rule of never closing the ass box, he was brutally kicked from the blog by the other mods. The tongue-in-cheek rule 7, be kind to Mod Silver, he is delicate, was changed to please send Mod Silver hate. Even though he's gone, please shit talk him and be kind to mod Amy. Despite the fact that he had quite literally never posted before, hundreds of Tumblr users rallied in support of Mod Silver, flooding the ass box with questions about his whereabouts and demanding hashtag justice for Mod Silver. Since you annoying fucks keep asking where Silver went, I'll explain. Silver broke one of the original rules, don't close ask and submit. Amy confronted him and he was kicked from the blog and we changed a few rules. Amy isn't being kicked, I'm not being kicked. Shadow isn't being kicked, we sorted it out, so kindly shut the fuck up, thanks. Mod Silver isn't coming back, stop asking about him. Now this is when a lot of hate towards Mod Amy started up. Amy is a polarizing figure in the story and was often painted by fans as the villain because of her tendency to instigate drama and stir the pot. The Down With Mod Amy movement formed after the exile of Silver, which fans blamed her for and many grew annoyed and even suspicious at how quickly Mod Sonic jumped to her defense. It was almost like something was up, but we'll get to that later. For now, the evil Mod Silver was vanquished, and though most of the mods were openly hated by all of the readers at this point, they bravely trucked on and continued to post. Hard-hitting truths about feminism, pronouns, gender, and of course, special snowflakes. Shadow, do you believe we should legalize full auto assault rifles? Hell yes. I'm effective and part of a system, am I going to hell? You sound annoying, so yes. Sally, what's your take on Tumblr feminism versus actual feminism? It depends on what side of Tumblr you mean. 
Do you mean the Tumblr feminists who say real women don't shave and design pastel pins with a uterus on them? Mod Amy, I'm sorry everyone is being mean to you. You're my favorite mod. Don't let the SJWs get to you. Thank you, Anon. Later that day, Mod Tails posted, quote, Hi everyone, I'm sorry I haven't been as active. I got into an argument with Amy, but I'm sure everything is okay now. Little did readers know that this post was an omen that Tails' days were numbered. Early the next morning, a bombshell dropped in the form of a post by Mod Tails. I've made a decision. I'm leaving Sonic for real justice. Immediately after I said hello to everyone in the Skype chat, Mod Amy began to harass and argue with me, saying things such as, Why do you never answer asks? Who's a better mod, me or Silver? How do I answer that question? Mod Amy and Mod Silver are both my friends. I still feel awful about what happened to Mod Silver. I started to wonder, maybe I'm not cut out for this. This isn't what I planned to have to deal with when I joined. I'm sorry. Thank you to everyone who supported me while I was a mod. I've called upon a friend to replace me as a mod and they will soon make an introduction post. They fully agree to be a mod despite the drama, along with the unjust in my opinion, loss of mod silver. Thank you everyone, and goodbye. Tails, you fucking liar, I just woke up. You just want the positive attention from everyone and to make me look like an idiot. This blew up. The banishment of mod Tails and their claims about Amy's cruelty gave the down with mod Amy movement even more fuel to put on the already raging fire with hate posts directed towards her flooding in. But there was no time to mourn the loss of Tails or even comprehend what was going on because another bombshell dropped. Mod Sonic and mod Amy were dating. Mod Sonic, how are you holding up? This drama must be exhausting. I'm sorry you have to deal with it. I know this isn't what you wanted. I know man, but it's okay really. It's just fucking annoying. I can handle shit like this. I'm just worried about Amy mostly. Why don't you just date her then? And if I already was without telling you? This literally goes against all Sonic has said prior. People have asked shit about Sonic and Amy and he always replied with something along the lines of GTFO, I'm gay. I was trying not to look suspicious, dumbass. Our relationship attracts weird attention and I'm bi curious anyways. Tagged as mod Sonic sexuality. It had only been two days and the blog was already two moderators down due to the insane fighting and it was clear that something needed to be done. Mod Knuckles was introduced as a new moderator for the blog brought on as a sort of peacekeeper to manage the blog and keep things stable and argument free. It looked like things were finally settling down under the watchful eye of Mod Knuckles as the infighting and drama came to a standstill. And then about 30 minutes later everything blew up again. Mod Takal posted a very personal post about figuring out her sexuality and coming out as a demigirl noting that she hadn't told the other mods but was sure her friends would be understanding. Alright, sorry to Cal, but this is the last straw. You're too cute, so you're breaking the rules. Sorry, you're getting kicked. Pack up your bags and get the fuck out. Mod Sonic, I beg of you, please let me stay. I'm so sorry. I should have asked before I made this choice. I don't even know what too cute means. As a side note, I didn't actually know what it meant either, but apparently it means this, so there you go. I'm sorry everyone, I truly am. I do not wish to upset anyone with my choices. This post may too be deleted, I'm afraid. I just just wanted to help. Goodbye. Good riddance. <laughs> When someone brought up the mod rule of not discriminating against anyone's gender, Mod Knuckles noted that they meant quote unquote real genders, so Takal was banned for being a special snowflake. Takal was generally seen as the best mod, being a lot more kind and soft spoken and accepting than her counterpart, so her sudden and unjust banning sent shockwaves through the community. Before the day was over, one more scuffle would take place between Mod Amy and Mod Shadow. Hey Shadow, how could you forget about all the times you've watched My Little Pony with Amy? Did that mean nothing to you? Stop. Annoyed Amy reaction image. Why are you still bitter about this? Just get over it already. I'm not bitter about it. You say we're friends, but then you say you don't care about me and don't want to answer questions about me or remember our times together. I don't even have anything against you. It's your stupid boyfriend who gets on my nerves. I just don't want people bringing up my little pony and calling me a fucking brony. But you don't have anything going for me either. We talked about this before. That last line is in reference to an ask from earlier in the blog where someone asked Mod Shadow if she thought that the others were incompetent and alongside calling Mod Sonic pathetic for not liking Sonic Adventure 2, she said she didn't have any opinions on Amy. This caused Amy to flip out and for Sonic to quote unquote leak the group chat where they both accused Shadow of hating her. I'm sorry I keep having to like jump back and forth and add addendums, but there was like so much drama, it's the only way. Day 3 was already off to a shaky start with the announcement that Mod Shadow was banned from posting for the night with absolutely no context or reason given. Things got worse with the introduction of Mod Sally, a new moderator who had been hired on to replace to Carl. Oh right, new mod. What's this mean, Sonic? You didn't post about a new mod when Knuckles joined. Okay, okay, I'm stopping this here. Another post about this and you're banned for the night, Mod Amy. Don't drag me into this either. Clearly, tensions were already high between Mod Amy and Sally 
as the former seemed to believe that Sally posed some kind of threat to her relationship despite the fact that Sally had literally never interacted with Sonic before. After Sally's introduction, Mod Sonic posted a smiling reaction image out of context which set off Mod Amy and caused an explosive argument between the two. Amy's just jealous, I think. No big deal. I don't like Mod Sally, so it's fine, probably. What, are you pan now? Face palm. I literally said I don't have romantic interest in Mod Sally. What are you talking about? I've done nothing to even imply I'm interested in them. Unless I have and you're just refusing to tell me. What are you so smug about, huh? You've made posts vaguing about how happy you are Sally's here now. What do you have to say about that? Despite this awkward interaction, the couple reassured everyone that they weren't breaking up and appeared to make amends until the sudden and shocking reappearance of Mod Shadow the next morning shattered the peace. Mod Sonic has a crush on Mod Sally. Pass it on. Sonic told me in a call, you were an idiot for trusting me. Shadow is next on the ban list like I give a shit. I was space can anyways. This is a serious post for those of you unsure if I'm joking. I'm gonna be kick soon, so here's my goodbye. Mod Shadow then posted this incredible image, noting that it was for Mod Sonic before promptly being banned from the blog. There will literally never be anything funnier than Mod Shadow logging on, starting shit, coming out of space can, and then dipping. Truly a historical moment. So let's take a quick break here for a moderator update. To help you all understand the public opinion on all of the mods at this point, I've put this handy alignment chart on the screen while we recap what each of the mods are up to and how people feel about them. Mod Sonic and Mod Amy were the only two original mods to have survived this long without being banned and were both public enemy number one. Mod Sonic for her rude and standoffish attitude and Mod Amy for, well, everything. She struck readers as accusatory, jealous and dramatic and Mod Sonic's clear favoritism and willingness to bend the rules for Mod Amy pissed people off even more. Mod Silver, the delicate, was long gone, Tails and Takao were both considered snowflakes and backstabbers and fan favourite Mod Shadow had been banned for stirring up drama and generally being edgy. Mod Knuckles was still touted as the peacekeeper of the group and public opinion seemed neutral on her despite the fact that she hadn't really done a particularly good job at keeping the peace. Mod Sally was a new addition and generally well received though it was clear that tensions were high after the Sonic and Amy incident. Alright, now let's return to the chaos. After a period of relative calm, Mod Sonic dropped a post that read, quote, By the way, Mod Knuckles broke a rule last night. She refused to tag something when asked. Despite his calm and casual tone, this post had devastating consequences. Why am I off the mods page? I just logged on. You broke the rules, and by the power of the Chaos Emeralds rules you were supposed to be responsible for, I banned you. Bye, Knuckles. You're wrong, they didn't say specifically for me to tag it. Actually, I'm not. They told you how to tag it as to not bother people, and you ignored it and were rude. You could have tagged both, you know. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Firstly, as you can see here, it's not mod Sonic anymore, it's mod Super Sonic, and the blog's theme changed accordingly. This is the same Sonic, by the way, she just changed her name because she's basically going through a Joker arc at this point. Secondly, the post that they're referring to is this one where someone tells Mod Knuckles that they can tag something as homophobia rather than lesbophobia. Mod Knuckles argues back that she very specifically meant lesbophobia, and it became a back and forth as they argued long into the night. So technically she didn't really fail to tag anything, and though fans expressed this, it fell on deaf ears. Shortly after Mod Knuckles was banned, and after they'd made sure that everyone else was asleep, Mod Sally posted that they would be resigning as a moderator after a grand total of two days. They were so close to retirement. In their post, they commented that they felt all of the drama was, quote, their fault and that they feared for Amy's safety. This sparked various theories about Sonic and Amy's relationship that persisted throughout the blog, but they seemed to get actually genuinely quite upset about these R's, so I'm not gonna go into them. With Knuckles gone and Sally having resigned, it was just Mod Super Sonic and Mod Amy running the blog. Upon being asked how they felt about this, they claimed that it was easier though cracks were already beginning to show very quickly. Are you guys going to be okay doing the blog by yourselves? Don't let this become more important than your personal needs. I'm not sure, honestly. It's hard for us not to get distracted slash off point because it was usually the other mods who kept us in line, I don't know. Shortly after this, a shocking twist. I'm banning mod Amy for her own good. What? What do you mean for my own good? I said I was staying. The blog is doing fine anyway since we have supporters and people are being nice. This blog is wearing you down. I noticed it, especially over the past few days. I'm tired of seeing you hurt because of the blog. The fans are unpredictable and something could happen even though you're currently fine. This is the end mod dark sonic i would never leave you alone on here we can work this out it'll be fine it'll be worse on your own you know you're wrong this is goodbye mod amy 
The blog had a good run with everyone on it, but it's better this way. Despite this dramatic turn, Mod Amy eventually made a goodbye post where she agreed that it was best for her to leave, which the fan base celebrated. Finally, Mod Amy had been brought down after her callous treatment of the other mods and justice had been served. Shortly after this, Sonic posted multiple fan art submissions of Mod Amy with captions like, She's gone. You're too late. Again, Mod Super Sonic had transformed, this time into Mod Dark Sonic with a theme to match. I'd just like to take a quick moment to let you all know that this was only day seven, like the blog had literally only existed for seven days at this point. Everything that we've talked about so far happened within the span of a week and I just think that's insane. Anyway, with Dark Sonic as the sole moderator, the future of Sonic for Real Justice was uncertain. Late into the night, she made three posts. I don't really know anymore. I just don't understand. I really don't. It's getting late. A reblog was made shortly after, a compilation of every moderator and their banishment including all of their sad posts, crying pics, and all of their heartbreaking final words. Mod Sonic was included in the final image, drawing Sonic for real justice to a heart-wrenching close. They were so focused on destroying the SJWs that they didn't realize they were destroying their own friendships, their own lives, their own blog. And then five days later, the blog was back up and running. You didn't actually think this trash fire was over, did you? Five days after Sonic's departure, three mods posted introductions, including the beloved mod Silver, mod Shadow, and a new face mod Blaze. While Silver stated that all of his friends hated him aside from mod Blaze, fans rejoiced that the uwu cinnamon roll too good for this world Silver had finally received the justice that he deserved after all of this time, and the rule to always be kind to mod Silver because he's delicate was added back as a master rule. All was right with the world. By this point, according to a post they made on the 13th of June, the blog had nearly 30,000 followers, a huge milestone for a blog only two weeks old. The mods quickly got back to posting regularly, high quality content as always, obviously. Hey Shadow, who's your favorite My Little Pony character? Don't ever ask me about My Little Pony ever again. I have a question for you. What are is your opinions on wasps and how they're basically bees but they don't make any positive contribution to society? Please respond. Don't say that. The next day, two new moderators were added because because, you know, historically adding new moderators has always been a net positive for this blog and has never caused any issues. Adding further confusion to the Sonic for Real Justice lore, the two new mods were called Classic Amy and Classic Sonic, and for clarification, these are not the two same mods as before, these are two new people who are also a couple. I'm Mod Classic Sonic, hey. Just like how Mod Classic Amy said she's not Mod Amy, I'm not Mod Sonic. I'm not against social justice in any way, of course, I just fucking hate SJWs for ruining social justice and turning it into something they'll look back on when they're older and cringe while desperately trying to hide their past. I would make some little statement here like, oh, you know, things were looking up, things were calming down, it looked, the outlook for the blog was positive, but we all know that's pointless. Obviously, the drama started almost immediately when not even 24 hours after her introduction, mod classic Amy posted a huge rant about the blog out of the blue. I, to be honest, think this blog is so fucking boring. No one is even posting and there's nothing to post about anymore and the followers are ridiculous. I mean, you all keep asking why I don't just go by mod Rosie, but that would be confusing because Auntie Amy is named Rosie and I'm not face claiming Rosie, you idiots. I just saw this. Classic Amy, you haven't made any real posts. Can you talk to me on Skype to discuss how to be a little nicer? I'm not even on Skype right now. I'm not getting on just so you can give me lessons in being uwu flower queen. Just start posting more and being less boring and I won't have this problem. Hey, Classic Amy, it's fine. Let's just wait until Silver starts posting more. I mean, he's the leader. He'll have to soon. Don't worry about it. It's his problem if people find us boring. I'm sure he'll work it out, you know. Silver responded by posting a mildly annoyed reaction picture, which for some reason set off Shadow and caused her to post an explosive rant. Get your popcorn and settle in, this one's a doozy. All right, it's been long enough. I'm fucking tired of it, Mod Silver. I'm done, I'm fucking done. Someone has to stand up to you. I'm fed up with this and so is everyone else. I've been talking about this shit with Mods Classic Sonic and Classic Amy for a few days and don't you fucking tell me to bring this up in PM either. I blocked you on Skype and left the group chat. Mod Blaze has to see, everyone has to see your lies exposed. I feel bad for Blaze. You're a bitter, passive aggressive fuck with a cover up for it like no fucking other. You play the innocent, ignorant fool when you're really a secretive, two-faced, lying asshole. You force us not to post over mod classic Amy being a little fucking bored of your shitty leadership skills but say everyone just thinks we're boring, it's not that I hate mod Amy at all. Even though you talked shit about her and PM during it. You made the master rule, be kind to mod silver, he is delicate, when you're not delicate in the fucking slightest. When we first made this blog we had to give up a rule slot for your ridiculous shit. You made us do that, you fucking manipulator. You're pretending to not remember the blog before 
before now, but you fucking know. You plotted to make mod Amy look bad when you acted like you were overwhelmed and closed the ask box to make whichever mod banned you look terrible. It was planned. You're a fucking fraud and I'm done putting up with your shit. So the truth finally came out. Mod Silver was never true delicate. He was true manipulator. He had orchestrated everything like a puppet master pulling the strings to make Mod Amy look bad. The down with Mod Amy movement was carefully planned every step of the way by the evil genius Mod Silver who put on an innocent and sweet mask to hide his devious intentions. The fans who all along had been demanding the return of their sweet and innocent did nothing wrong Mod Silver were shocked at this revelation. I would say that it seemed like the blog was coming apart at the seams but let's be real there were never any seams to begin with. After this bombshell the blog fell silent for a few days before Mod Silver tried covering the drama up by saying that Shadow was quote upset over made up stuff. He also made a passive aggressive post directed at Classic Sonic and Amy insinuating that they might be banned for their attitudes. After this brief bout of posting the blog fell silent again for an unprecedented 10 days. Sonic for Real Justice was pretty well known for how often they'd post and how much drama they'd get into on a day by day basis so for them to not get into any huge arguments or blowouts for a week let alone post just basic posts was pretty unprecedented. On the 2nd of July Mod Silver announced that Mod Classic Sonic and Amy were banned for breaking the gotta post fast rule and confirmed that he, Blaze and Shadow would be staying despite the fact that they hadn't posted anything either. It seemed to many that Mod Silver was simply using this as an excuse to ban two mods that he didn't like since bending the rules for your own personal gain was very common on Sonic for Real Justice. One of the only other posts made that month aside from some Zuby videos for some reason was the simple yet ominous post from Mod Shadow. You'll see what really happened, eventually. On August the 8th, after over a month of radio silence, the blog theme was quietly updated from Silver's theme to Shadow's. And then, out of the blue, a post. I'm a SJW. Mod Shadow. Naturally, fans had questions. Why had the blog been inactive for so long? Where were the other mods? Was Sonic for Real Justice dead? Shadow reassured everyone that Silver, Amy, Sonic, and all of the other mods were doing just fine and that they quote just sort of left rather than leaving because of any big argument or conflict. Shadow stuck around to answer asks on why she thought bronies were disgusting, being spacekin, Donald Trump, and more. Mod Amy and Mod Sonic joined back up shortly after, replying to Shadow's fictionkin and SJW posts with smug and disdain for reaction images showing their disgust. From here the blog transformed from an in-character anti-SJW blog to a meta-commentary on the blog as all of the mods came out to claim that this had all been an elaborate joke. Turns out that despite there being 10 moderators throughout the course of the entire blog, only 4 people were behind it which later turned to 3 as one person left. However, I have heard from inside sources that apparently there were way more mods involved. Multiple mods were made up and played by different people. Tails and Takao were played by one person as was Sonic and Silver and Sally and Knuckles were played by 2 people interchangeably. Mod Shadow was played by one person. They wrote that they had all pre-planned several of the dramas that took place on the blog but others weren't planned at all and were simply improvised in the heat of the moment. It also revealed that all of the mods were minors, which explains a lot. When asked why they did this they simply replied, it was summer vacation and we were bored. From there the story pretty much fizzles out. Sonic for Real Justice briefly became a Danganronpa blog and then a gay Yu-Gi-Oh blog. The original blog URL is now being used by a random Tumblr user for their own personal blog so please Please don't send them messages or bother them about any of this since they're not related to it. As a matter of fact most of the blogs related to Sonic for Real Justice are now inactive and the only way that I could actually read through all of the posts was using the archive blog at SFRJ Archive which I'd like to thank for archiving and ordering all of these posts. If you want to follow the whole epic saga yourself from start to finish in a conveniently ordered fashion I highly recommend checking them out. And with that let's wrap up the story of Sonic for Real Justice with a reflection on the impact that this masterpiece had on Tumblr and the wider internet. As the blog skyrocketed into popularity, memes, articles, videos, and posts flooded Tumblr and the wider internet, all revolving around Sonic for Real Justice. Memes about how terrible Mod Amy was, parody posts and copypasters of Mod Shadow, hashtag justice for Mod Silver, even fan art of the mods and their various interactions. Hundreds of posts were made to Tumblr shit talking Mod Sonic, and people still talk about the fact that Knuckles was brought in as a peacekeeper and then did absolutely nothing before being banned by a powered up Super Sonic. 
Fan blogs were common as people imitated the various mods and roleplayed as them. News blogs popped up to update Tumblr users on the latest Sonic for Real Justice news, even parody Blank for Real Justice for counts for various fandoms. It's actually become something of a template for Ask blogs, with Blank for Real Justice blogs generally being run by multiple face claiming moderators. Sonic for Real Justice is still a household name on the internet, like people still talk about it and parody it and meme on it, which just goes to show you how viral this thing was. For some reason, the modern narrative of Sonic for Real Justice completely leaves out the fact that the mods all came forward to admit that it had been an elaborate joke and a hoax. A lot of people frame it as, oh, this is a cautionary tale about kids running Tumblr blogs, and oh, this is peak Tumblr, wow, I can't believe that actually happened, but uh, people seem to forget that they came out and said it was fake. The literally constant arguing and infighting, the melodrama and overacting, characters going through joker arcs and being edgy and overdramatic, and the fact that it was a goddamn Sonic anti-SJW blog probably should have been dead giveaways. Even in the wake of the reveal that it was all staged, the blog was, and still is, polarizing. Some feel that it was just a bunch of kids, many of whom were actually part of the LGBTQ community themselves, having fun and taking the piss out of anti-SJWs. Others felt that the blog was insensitive and defensive, whether it was satire or not. This video may make it seem like everyone loved Sonic for Real Justice and memed on it and thought it was really funny, but there was a pretty big group at the time who genuinely hated the blog and petitioned against it. Most posts nowadays are jokes and memes, but back then genuine call-out posts were common and there was a big push to cancel Sonic for Real Justice, though this negative feedback only served to make the blog more popular. Whether you believe that it was a satirical parody, a half-baked prank, or genuinely offensive, you can't deny that it was very effective as a Tumblr soap opera and the sheer number of fans that it garnered is proof of that. Ultimately, while Sonic for Real Justice is over, that one week where the Sonic anti-SJW blog was popular and there were like 20 dramas a day and everyone was following it and memeing on it will always be unfair. Forgettable. From the persecution of Mod Amy to the betrayal of True Delicate Silver to the death and rebirth of the glorious Mod Shadow, Sonic for Real Justice has more than earned its place in the Tumblr Hall of Fame. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, um, I hope that you really enjoyed that topic. I've been wanting to cover Sonic for Real Justice for a long time, it's a classic piece of Tumblr history. Um, it's, it's an unforgettable story, so I, I really wanted to cover it. If you guys ever have anything else that you want me to cover or any suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know down in the comments. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much to my Garfield Overlords over on Patreon. Matt LRJ and Ginkgo Fox, Samsung Account, Chicory, Trevor Zonde, SHSL Sunsun, Doug, Boysenberry Switchblade, Jordan Nielsen, Dana Homegardner, Charlie B, Simon, John Leach, Ren Pendragon, Pom, Agarafin, Xavier Araujo, Finley, Helm Hamburgerhand, Dozo Blint, Sheriff Whiskey, The Furby Librarian, Red Meth, Astrian Vortex, Jesse Chisholm, Sophie Skidder, Brianna Robinson, Crip Gunderson, Tyson, Kimono My Gyro, Joe Bradshaw, and Arcantilus. Thank you guys so much for supporting me it means the world to me um if you want to join these guys over on patreon the link will be in the description and yeah thank you guys so much for watching my video i really hope that you enjoyed it and i hope to see you in the next one bye